Hi guys, Brendan from TAT here. Um, today I'm just going to show you some quick fundamental airbag system testing methods. So the car we've got today is a 2005 BK Mazda 3 and customer complaint is that airbag light on which we have confirmed. So we've got an airbag warning light on, we've got our fault code of B1881 passenger seatbelt pretensioner circuit open. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go and look at live data. If it's available on the scan tool it's always a lot easier than having to um, try and do it without it. So we're going to see what our resistance is currently on that pretensioner. So if we go down the, looking at a passenger pretensioner there, we're at 9 points, sorry I'll get it so you can see, 9.9 .9 ohms. Um, you know, what's it supposed to be? Well, you don't particularly know on most systems. I'm going to expect somewhere around three, but we've got the um, help in this case that we've got the driver's pretension at 2.8, which isn't sending a code, so I can assume that's going to be good. Um, on the flip side, as you can see, the driver's side airbag and the passenger side airbag, see they're at 9.9 .9 ohms and, and not a, a problem, but I would say they're sort of a secondary airbag that's not fit on this one because we've got our primary airbags up here at 2.9. So you'll find that's a, it's a fairly reoccurring number. You know, if you're around that three mark, um, you can be pretty certain that it's going to be correct, but all manufacturers are different. They can use whatever they want, and definitely this is um, not looking good to us. So we've got a problem. First thing I'm going to do is we look down here and we see... Um, keeping our wardrobe in the car so that's that's great that's a really good indication to me there's probably going to be a bunch more shoes underneath there yeah I can see some already so we're keeping all the shoes under there great money maker for mechanics basically as far as there's probably going to be a connection issue under the seat so I'm going to see um, if there's wiring for this stalk which could have the pretensioner under the seat if not then we're going to be looking at if the belt um, has the pretensioner built into it down in the assembly then we're going to be pulling those trims off but first we'll take a look underneath the seat so i've disconnected the fuse from the airbag system just in case for safety while we're working on it and you can see there are all these shoes under here um, we do have one set of wires at this connector here now often you'll find that they're going to be yellow wiring in this case it's not and um, i can see that it goes to the dry the um, passenger seat belt so there's very likely a pretensioner in there um, something that i want you to take note of because um, it can catch people out let's get right in there let's get past this bar so notice at the bottom we've got those little bars i'll get it to focus even better if possible you'll see these bars at the bottom of the connector the pins are actually at the top there these bars are called shorting bars, and so what they're doing is, um, right now they're joining these two pins together. If we were to put the connector in, it's gonna push those bars down, they're no longer connected. Um, from my reading, my theory, I believe it's to avoid um, potential voltage difference between the two when the thing is unplugged, um, static electricity, all that kind of thing. And so if you were to do a resistance test, um, definitely we wouldn't do it through here because that's a, a um, explosive but they'll sometimes put this in um, let's say you know we were going to do that through a clock spring and so we could unplug it from the other side and we could do a resistance test um, through that but some people get unstuck because they've got these shorting bars and so of course we're going to have good continuity between those two pins because it's going straight through here where you could have a clock spring that is open circuit um, and those pins are what are giving you a closed circuit. So don't get caught out if you're testing a clock spring. Obviously with the airbag disconnected off the other side, I definitely do not condone resistance testing on an explosive. Um, so always pay attention to those shorting bars. So in this case, um, I can see that we've got some wires there. So we'll see if we've just got a connection issue and, and we'll go from there. So on the computer side of the wiring connector, so this is going back to the ECU here you'll see I've just inserted a resistor so you know small little terminals it's not spreading the terminals or anything I've just got it sitting in there lightly I haven't shoved it in so we've spread the terminals now that's a two and a half ohm resistor you can pick them up from any electronic store right um, so that's now being our airbag that's our dummy airbag basically and if we go up to our scan tool now we can see our pretensioner on the passenger side is now at two and a half ohms as I would expect so I can be confident that there's no fault in the wiring. Um, we're, we're good basically from uh, that connector back. So we basically either have a fault in the connector or a fault in the actual pretensioner itself. But what I'm going to do is 
Um, use a bit of this deoxid. So many other products that people um, use, but I'm going to use a bit of this in, in the connector. I've had pretty good experience over the years. You know, there's a good chance that if I was to plug this in, in my experience, this is probably going to be fine. Really, um, a lot of the time it is just the the connector underneath there. So basically, I'm going to give it a clean out. Um, there is no um, you know physical wear that I can see through the connector, it's not spread or anything. I'm going to spray some of that in there to try and boost continuity and if it comes good it's probably just the connector. If it does not come good then we know the problem is in the pretensioner itself. So we're back together now. Um, I should mention how do I know the terminals aren't spread. Just I just use a little kit like this, DAT equipment one, there's the front. And so many kits like it but it comes with all kinds of terminals so you know you'd be using one like this which is a a fine get it on there focus not going to for you um, you have to take my word for it it's a fine male terminal you obviously pick out the right size for the connector you're using and a terminal drag test so we put that in and we make sure we can feel a little bit of resistance there you know we don't want it to be able to flop around um, obviously make sure you're using the right size connector um, you can do the same thing on the male pins really although less often there's some female ones in there so those there is resistance on the terminal I'm happy with that Got my dummy resistor out now. I've um, sprayed a bit of this into the, the connector and then dried it out with some compressed air. And we are back to a good system. So our passenger side pretensioner is now reading 2.7 ohms, just the same as the others. Um, we no longer have a check engine light. I have, I'm sorry, an airbag light. I haven't even actually cleared the code. I will go and clear the code, but already it's showing us the system self-tests and it's happy. So um, looks like we're good and it was just a, a connection issue. So a couple of test techniques there that you can apply to any kind of airbag system, guys. Um, obviously, these under seat pretensioner ones, whenever you see shoes and things like that, it's um, very common that it's just gonna be the connector. Very delicate, I would say. Very sensitive is probably the better word. So it doesn't take much for them to um, not be creating a, a good connection there. A lot of the time it's just as simple as either giving it a wiggle or unplugging and plugging the thing back in and it's all good. Um, over the years I've told customers, look, this is the problem. We can't be 100% sure that it's fixed. You know, you would, the only way would be getting a new connector there, but I don't believe it's necessary. You know, there is terminal tension there. Um, maybe a little bit of oxidization builds up on the connector pins and that's what does it. So that's why I like to use a little bit of spray like that. So this one's all finished. Um, stay safe when working on airbag systems, obviously, and um, hopefully this helps you in the future. Thanks. Bit of bonus footage, guys. So as I was going to throw back my resistor, lo and behold, I found, with incorrect spelling and all, I actually have one of these that I must have bought a couple of years ago. So obviously, just so you know, there are items out on the market that you can buy that, um, you know, a little bit better form and fit than, than this guy. But um, yeah, I'm just so used to using the resistor. That's where I went first. Thanks.